Most Christians in the West can go to church on Sunday without any concerns about being slaughtered in the name of Allah. In other parts of the world, things are different because Christians going to church are seen as targets. And just as hitting a target at a carnival wins you a prize, hitting a Christian target in Allah's demonic carnival wins you the prize of all perverted prizes. Lots of virgins. Yes, according to Islam, slaughtering unbelievers in the name of Allah wins you virgins in paradise. You get to spend eternity deflowering them. Sounds like the true religion and not something straight from the pits of hell, right? CNN reports. Gunmen killed a Christian priest and wounded another as the clerics drove home from church in Pakistan's northwestern city of Peshawar on Sunday, police said. Two attackers on a motorcycle opened fire on the car on the city's ring road, killing Pastor William Siraj instantly, officers added. No one immediately claimed responsibility for the shooting in a city where scores of people died in a twin suicide bombing outside a church in 2013, one of the deadliest attacks on Pakistan's Christian minority. Azad Marshall, the most senior bishop in the Church of Pakistan, condemned the attack and tweeted, We demand justice and protection of Christians from the government of Pakistan. So, Christians are appealing to the government of Pakistan for justice and protection? In 1991, the government of Pakistan declared that Sharia is the supreme law of the country. As long as Sharia is the supreme law in Pakistan, non-Muslims will never get real justice or protection from the government. At best, the government will try to put on a show to avoid criticism from other nations. Pakistan's northwestern areas bordering Afghanistan have seen a rise in militant attacks on security forces in recent days, many of them claimed by Tariqi Taliban Pakistan, TTP, a group which associates itself with the Afghan Taliban. Part of the ongoing fallout from the Taliban takeover in Afghanistan is that other jihadis in other countries have been encouraged. They now have hope that they too can eventually take over their countries and impose an even stricter version of Islamic law. TV footage showed emergency services removing Siraj from the car and people chanting, Long live Jesus Christ, as they carried his body on a bed through the streets to a house. Mourners hugged each other and sobbed. Pastor Siraj's colleague, named by Bishop Azad as the Reverend Patrick Naim, was out of danger and being treated for his injuries, a spokesman for the city's Lady Reading Hospital said. Bishop Azad said both were clergy of the Diocese of Peshawar in the Church of Pakistan, which is a union of Protestant churches, including the Methodists and the Anglicans. And that's what Christians have to deal with in Pakistan. Now, if this were a one-off attack, if this were something that had never happened before and will never be repeated, what could we learn from it? Probably not much. But since there have been tens of thousands of attacks like this over the past two decades, what can we learn from it? You might think that after tens of thousands of attacks carried out in the name of Allah, it's probably a good time to open Islam's most trusted sources to see why this ideology produces endless violence against non-Muslims. But you'd be wrong, because there's an even greater problem here, a problem that trumps all other problems. In fact, even if there were a billion terrorist attacks carried out in the name of Allah, it wouldn't matter at all because there's something even more important that we're all supposed to focus on. You know what I'm talking about. Islamophobia. Islamophobia. While Christians and Hindus and Buddhists and Sikhs and Yazidis are being beaten and raped and tortured and killed, Western politicians are busy reminding us that Islamophobia is unacceptable and declaring that government officials will be combating Islamophobia. Notice the language, combating Islamophobia. It's the same language we find in the Combating International Islamophobia Act passed by Congress in the U.S. Western governments have decided to combat Islamophobia. Now, if all they wanted to do was make laws against killing Muslims for their faith, 
That would be something we could all agree on. But it's already illegal to kill Muslims or to attack Muslims for their faith. So what exactly are these governments going to do to combat Islamophobia? What is Islamophobia? As far as I can tell, it's any criticism of Muhammad or the Quran or Jihad. In my most recent debate, I was repeatedly called an Islamophobe for saying that a grown man shouldn't have sex with a prepubescent nine-year-old girl. Condemning pedophilia is Islamophobia. As we were debating in Dallas, less than 30 minutes away from us, there was a hostage situation in a synagogue where a Muslim terrorist had taken Jewish hostages and was demanding the release of another Muslim terrorist. So, there were Jewish hostages, there was a Muslim terrorist, I was debating a Muslim who was defending Muhammad, I was criticizing Muhammad for having sex with a prepubescent girl. According to these new government task forces for combating Islamophobia, who was the bad guy in all of that? Was it A, Muhammad for having sex with a little girl, B, Kenny Bomer for defending Muhammad, C, the Muslim terrorist holding Jewish hostages at gunpoint, D, the Jewish hostages, or E, me, David Wood, for criticizing pedophilia? Me, D. Wood, I was the bad one, according to the U.S. and Canadian governments. And if those Jewish hostages criticized Islam at all after they were taken hostage in the name of Allah, they're the bad guys with me. Why am I pointing this out? Well, it's hard to protect religious minorities in Pakistan when, here in the West, our governments have decided to protect the religion that calls for violence against religious minorities and to combat anyone who criticizes the religion that calls for violence against religious minorities. Here's an idea, Western politicians. How about protecting the victims of violent ideologies and not the violent ideologies? And if you're too cowardly to protect the victims of violent ideologies, just shut up and get out the way so we can refute the violent ideologies. What are you going to do now? Arrest us? This is a power of religion. There's a reason to it. Yeah? Yeah?